sewing denim. Uh, blisters on your hands and frayed edges and broken needles. Do you know all the things that can go wrong when you're working with denim? <laughs> but then how can you call yourself an upcycler if you don't know how to sew it? How can I call myself an upcycler? I don't know how to sew denim. <laughs> You are going to earn the title. We're going to work through 16 different secret techniques and skills. I know you thought you were just here to make a cute little bag, but the actual purpose of this video is to teach you advanced skills that you don't find on YouTube channels where they teach you how to glue things together that you don't find in sewing pattern directions and which you really need to be able to make your dreams unstoppable. And these are not obvious, but they are the skills that I have found most valuable over the last 10 years of working with denim and that I've condensed down into one project that'll challenge you to learn every single one of them. Are you ready? We're going to start here at the iron. First thing I do is put in my interfacing. Now, if you want a video on how to cut this, please let me know and I will make one for you because I have kind of skipped over how you find the grain and twill and denim is a kind of twill and fabrics that don't have a selvage and, and maybe some key things about understanding the PDF pattern, which by the way, there is a link to in the description. You don't want things sagging around on your bag and flopping around. Like you don't want things just sort of drooping. And that's what interfacing does, is it gives structure and stability to the bag, and it reinforces areas that are going to see more stress, like where your buckles latch down, where your belt loops are, where your um, tack button is. I'm going to start by interfacing the flap, and then we're going to interface the front of the pouch. For the front of the pouch, I'm skipping the hem, and I'm putting the interfacing just inside the seam allowance. There are three things that make heat activated interfacing work. One is heat, one is pressure, and one is time. Most interfacing these days has little glue pills on one side of it, and you can feel them, and that's the side that's going to go towards the fabric because it's heat activated. So when the heat from the iron hits it, it's going to adhere to your fabric. If you want the interfacing to stick to your iron, fuck, shit, fuck, curses! or to stick to the ironing board. Oh, sh again. Then by all means, just slap it down any which way. <laughs> and buttonholes tend to stretch out over time, so that's another good place to put your interfacing. Here's a secret. It's not on the list because it's not specific to denim. But if you don't have interfacing, other fabric will do as long as it has a stiffness to it. In fact, before we had heat-activated polyester non-biodegradable, disgusting. Why did I buy a whole bolt of it? It was COVID <laughs> interfacing. Before that, we had crinoline and we had stiff fabrics or a second layer of the fabric that you're making the garment of that we would use for interfacing. Any stiff piece of fabric glued in place and then sewn down will actually work. How long do you want your strap? Because the pattern that I gave you has a pendant length. If you want it to be a side pocket, then you will need to make a longer strap and you can sew those two pieces together and measure how long you want it plus a couple inches on either side where you're going to sew it down. When you put those pieces together, here's a little trick I learned in upholstery class when we were making piping that goes on forever. You can sew at a 45 degree angle by placing right sides together when they're both cut on a 90 degree angle and then open it up and that will help distribute that bulk. Turning a long narrow strap is kind of impossible. So how do you get rid of those raw edges? Let me show you. First, we're going to press those straps in half just to have a reference crease. This can be very quick. Not as quick as I'm showing it to you because this is sped up footage, but fairly quick. And then turn both sides in and to that center. We're basically making like double sided um, bias tape, only with not bias. <laughs> The finger press technique. And what this is, is you just want to kind of use your fingers to press it in place so that you don't have to get that iron ouch, right next to your fingers and burn them 
which I always sort of manage to do anyway. So finger press, finger press, finger press, hold it down, set it in place, and then hit it with the iron. Move those fingers out of the way. And then you're gonna fold the folded edges in together and all of the raw edges have disappeared. Isn't that beautiful? Easy peasy. Now we're gonna go press it again, neat and tidy, and so much faster than, even with all the pressing, so much faster than trying to like sew it and turn it inside out. And now it's time to top stitch it down. Did you notice that our top stitch thread is heavy duty? Even when I'm not top stitching, I use a slightly heavyweight thread. And with that, I also use a heavier needle, a denim needle, like one of the 110s. Denim needles are usually recognizable because they have blue on them. It's almost like, you know, blue for blue jeans, like they wanted to make it easy for us to remember or something. <laughs> I believe the best of people. <laughs> It's time to find a top stitch thread that you like. And they do sell top stitch threads. It's thicker and there are various colors so you can decide what you like. But if you don't want to run out to the store or you just don't want to spend the extra cash to do that, you can double up any color thread that you want to use on the top. And we do that by winding some of it onto a bobbin and then we feed the bobbin and the thread through the sewing machine all as if it were one piece right through, all the way through to the needle. Now you're ready to top stitch your strap. And I'm gonna show you in fast motion, just so this isn't as epic as it could be. Even though the key to having this work out well is to go slow. <laughs> you might get all excited and think, oh man, I want a really heavy duty seam and stick that heavy duty thread into the lower bobbin. It doesn't always work out very well. <laughs> if you're working with a modern machine that doesn't have a little bobbin case where you can adjust the tension, but a machine where it automates the tension on the bobbin, it's not going to like a thick thread. And you're like, what's wrong with me? I'm a terrible sewer. No, the sewing machine just doesn't want to play nice. If you're trying to put a thick thread into the bottom bobbin on a modern machine, it's like trying to take a fire hose and shove it through a straw. It's just too big and it's not going to create happiness for you. So what you want to do instead is keep a lightweight thread on that bottom machine. And on your top thread, which does go through the tension disc, you now have a thicker thread. So we want to lighten up on that tension so that it can go through a little more smoothly because it's now got a fire hose in its mouth. As well as making that upper tension a little lighter, we want to make that stitch a little longer. That also just makes it easier for the thick thread on that thick needle to sew along. It's not trying to puncture as many places. After you've done a test stitch, highly recommended. If you have a little mess on the bottom, it might just be that you forgot to hold on to both of those threads in the back. So try that out and see if it doesn't solve that problem. And then we're gonna do the same process for the belt loops. We're gonna fold them over and fold them over and fold them over and top stitch them down. Or you could just salvage a belt loop from an old pair of jeans. I have some very heavyweight, wonderful tailor scissors. They are my favorite Amazon purchase ever. And I they just go through denim like butter. So I just snip off the old belt loops and migrate them into my project. Then I don't have to make one. Are you ready for your first big challenge? There are two ways to go and either way it's going to be a little bit of fiddling and diddling to make it work. And that's where the practice and the skill comes into place. So option one is that you approach this like you normally would anything that you were gonna turn inside out. Okay, if you stall out right at the beginning, this is totally normal. <laughs> because what's going on here is you have a couple layers of denim and it's a little bit thicker than nothing behind the machine, right? So the presser foot is at a little uphill angle and that makes it hard for it to go. So then it starts sewing in place and that makes a little rat's nest. Totally normal. How do we solve that? Hmm. Hump jumper to the rescue. <laughs> What's a hump jumper? No, it's not a new sexual position. I'm sorry. I know you were getting excited about that. 
Well, a commercial hump jumper is a little plastic thing that's going straight to the landfill that you can never find when you need it and is always taking up space and cluttering up your life when you don't. It is garbage. And it's so stupid because you can do exactly what a hump jumper does, get you over the humps, with any little scrap of cardboard or fabric, a nice piece of seam allowance that's laying around. And that's exactly what I recommend you do. And what you do is you take that little piece of fabric or cardboard and you stick it under the back of the presser foot so that the back is a little higher than the front and your foot is now headed downhill. So it's gonna go right on forward without any trouble at all. So nice. I mean, it's basically just a shim that you put under the back of the presser foot. Sometimes I use them on the side when I'm edge stitching and I don't want the fabric to keep getting pushed out by that other side of the presser foot. And if I just even it out, it's a lot easier to go straight through. Oh, here's another thing you can try. Another secret, <laughs> especially when you get really thick areas that you can't get underneath the presser foot. And by the way, you can lift that lever up higher than it just normally goes just by pushing up on it. There you go. So you've got a little bit more room than you thought down there. Now, if you still can't get your bulky denim through there, <laughs> this is my favorite tool. I know, I love hammering. It's just poof, so satisfying. It's not the subtle, detailed hand-eye coordination that most of sewing is. So this is my tool of choice. So fibers are flexible. And if you tell them assertively, get in place they will put the right sides together start at one end sew to the corners pivot pivot sew to the other end and then turn it right side out and what's going to be really hard and take time is the turning because this is a very small strap i mean it's what maybe an inch wide <laughs> and then inside there's all this bulk and seam allowance so that is option one Option two is that you fold under the lining and the denim piece at a quarter inch all the way around. And this takes a lot of fiddling and diddling to get those points to look really even and balanced with each other and to press them into place. And I usually use clips at either end and pins in the areas where I'm trying to mark exactly where I'm going to pivot and so and pivot on the fabric to make sure it lines up at exactly the same place. That's another way to measure those turns. And if you have to go back half a stitch, you can do that. If you chose a thick lining, like you thought, oh, I'll, I'll line my denim with denim, you are doing yourself a huge disservice because it's so much easier to sew through something lightweight. And that lightweight thing's job is just to kind of hold things in place and make them look good when you know you see the reverse side. So it's not a big job and almost any lightweight fabric will be great. You put the two pieces together with the wrong sides facing and edge stitch at about a 16th all the way around the point. Turn it over and see if you caught that lining. You can do this. I know you can. If I can do it, I have the worst hand-eye coordination ever. You can do it. And there, your edge stick looks spectacular. You know we're good enough. And maybe you catch the bottom layer. <laughs> and maybe you don't. And how do we fix that? Well, here's what I do. I go in and I make a second little decorative layer. Uh-huh. Yeah, and that one catches the bottom layer. So now everything's sewn down. Okay, whew. That is what I call advanced sewing. Yes! <laughs> Congratulations! You've mastered your first set of lessons. Woohoo! Party down! You have left the beginners in the dust. Suck it, beginners! We gotta celebrate every little achievement, and you have done very, very well. This was a hard, hard thing that you just tackled. And I want you to get drunk, have a good time, party down, and we'll be back for the next set of tasks very soon. And if you know of any better way to do any of these things, then you've got to share. We are here to support each other. So drop a comment and tell us how you think we should do something better, because we will.